Canada's armed forces from the earliest conflicts to the war in Afghanistan and still serve today. I feel very privileged to be here today for the unveiling of the flag garden where 11,800 flags were planted to honor the 118,000 members of the Canadian Armed Forces who lost their lives while serving Canada on overseas missions. This tribute not only honors the memory of the fallen, but acknowledges the sacrifices of the families of those who have lost one of their own. These families include Manulife colleagues whose relatives served in Canada's armed forces from the earliest conflicts to the war in Afghanistan and still serve today. I feel very privileged to be here today for the unveiling of the flag garden where 11,800 flags were planted to honor the 118,000 members of the Canadian Armed Forces who lost their lives while serving Canada on overseas missions. This tribute not only honors the memory of the fallen, but acknowledges the sacrifices of the families of those who have lost one of their own. These families include Manulife colleagues, whose relatives served in Canada's armed forces from the earliest conflicts to the war in Afghanistan and still serve today. I feel very privileged to be here today for the unveiling of the flag garden where 11,800 flags were planted to honor the 118,000 members of the Canadian Armed Forces who lost their lives while serving Canada on overseas missions. This tribute not only honors the memory of the fallen, but acknowledges the sacrifices of the families of those who have lost one of their own. These families include Manulife colleagues whose relatives served in Canada's armed forces from the earliest conflicts to the war in Afghanistan and still serve today. I feel very privileged to be here today for the unveiling of the flag garden where 11,800 flags were planted to honor the 118,000 members of the Canadian Armed Forces who lost their lives while serving Canada on overseas missions. Out and then I'll start. Yes, I okay. apologize. No problem.
I will, I will actually ask you to come over from the choir through over here, but those are two seats for you to sit in, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, no, no. I, they're, they're to sit with the choir. Oh, they're, they're, they're going to do the choir song first, and then I will call them. I've got it. Okay. Good morning. My name is Warren Thompson. I'm the Chief Investment Officer at Manulife. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone for making the time to join us this morning for our second annual Remembering the Fallen Ceremony. This special tribute to those who made the ultimate sacrifice to preserve our way of life in Canada was the idea of my wife, Lisa. She thought it would be a meaningful way to graphically illustrate the magnitude of sacrifice made by those who served in our military for old and new Canadians alike and serve as a fitting remembrance. Serving in the Canadian Armed Forces is not an easy calling. In the past century alone, we have seen two world wars and numerous conflicts such as Korea and Afghanistan. The men and women of our military undertake enormous risk. And for those who have fallen, their sacrifice was greater than anyone can make. Canada owes these men and women our gratitude. Today we honour them the best way we can by keeping their memories alive. As a gesture of thanks and remembrance, Manulife employees and volunteers have planted more than 11,800 flags. Each flag represents 10 Canadians who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of our country. Some of these Canadians were Manulife employees or family members of those present here today. This tribute not only honours the memory of the fallen, but acknowledges the sacrifice made by the families of those who have also lost a loved one. We are indebted to those who defend our nation and our values. Thanks to them, we can continue to enjoy the freedom, privileges, way of life we have today and that our children will be able to enjoy tomorrow. Let us pay tribute to the sacrifice they have made and let us never ever forget. I am pleased to welcome our special guests for today. First, I'd like to welcome Brigadier General K.R. Cotton, representative of the Canadian Armed Forces. He has been awarded the Order of Military Merit and the Canadian Forces Decoration. Accompanying Brigadier General Cotton is Chief Petty Officer Lawrence Doucette. I'd like to now call on our veteran Lieutenant Commander Scott Harold, Royal Canadian Navy. He has also been awarded the Canadian Forces Decoration. Our Padre for today's ceremony will be Kelly Jackson, District Padre for Division 5 of the Royal Canadian Legion. And I'd now like to call on Chief Petty Officer Lawrence. Oh, I'm sorry. I switched you Thank you. I'm also delighted to welcome the Rose Park uh, Public School Children's Choir, who will be rendering some songs for us this morning. Bagpiper, Master Corporal Kevin Pett of the 48th Highlanders of Canada, 
and one of our own employees from John Hancock Retirement Plan Services, Bugler David Pottinger, Petty, Petty Officer First Class in the Royal Canadian Navy. He has been awarded the Canadian Forces Decoration. The Rose Avenue Public School Children's Choir will now sing the national anthem. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite Brigadier General K.R. Cotton of the Canadian Armed Forces to make a few remarks. Well, good morning, everyone. On behalf of General John Vance, the Chief of the Defence Staff, I want to thank you for the invitation to attend this memorial service. He regrets that his schedule precluded him from attending this morning. The inaugural event held here last November was incredibly well received, causing most who passed by to stop and take a moment from their busy lives to reflect and to be reminded of the sacrifices made by so many that allow us to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy today. For many, the scale of loss and sacrifice during the world wars grows increasingly hard to comprehend as they retreat further from our collective consciousness. With our more recent conflicts, we understand that fewer losses are no less significant, particularly to those left behind to grieve. Indeed, a single loss is felt by so many. This installation is a poignant visual testament to the scale of loss endured by Canadians over the years and reminds us that the lives that we live and enjoy today are in large measure the result of the selflessness of so many who have preceded us. It is simultaneously intimate and personal, as well as communal, connecting us individually and collectively with the past and with each other today. For those of us who serve today, it is very heartening to know that there are people and organizations like Manulife who are committed to ensuring we do not forget the sacrifices made by so many in uniform over the years. And on a personal note, I had the privilege yesterday of hosting eight veterans uh, from Sunnybrook Veterans Care Facility at our college for lunch. Uh, there are over 400 veterans at Sunnybrook, and I would encourage you, if you get the opportunity, go to visit them. They've got great stories to tell, and they'll really help you uh, connect with the past and with, uh, with their legacy. So if you've got a chance, please take advantage of that. I know they'd love to see you, and you will really benefit from the experience as well. We will remember them. Thank you, Brigadier General Cotton. I'd now like to call two members of the Rose Park Public School Choir to the stage, Sadbav Gajarel and Sophia Hassan. And I'd now ask Padre Kelly Jackson to begin the commemorative portion of this event. Good morning, everyone. If you could just bow your head for just a moment of reflection. Loving God, you sent us your son to bring your peace to the world. 
Help us to work for peace in our homes, our schools, our city, and our world. Help our prayers of sadness that remember men, women, boys, and girls who have sacrificed and died in war. Prayers of thanksgiving for the courage of those who have been peacemakers. Prayers of hope for a world where war is a distant memory. Protect all soldiers who are at war and bring them home safely to their families. Kindly hear these prayers and lead us closer to your heart. This each we pray in the name of whom we believe. Amen. Do you want to do that? Okay, sure. Do you want to, do you want to call on the yeah. people from here on in? Sure. I will now call on Lieutenant Colonel Scott Harold for the act of remembrance. <clears throat> act of remembrance, lac de restubineo. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Ils ne vivront pas comme nous, qui leur avons survécu. Ils ne connaîtront jamais l'outrage ni la poide des années. Quand viendra l'heure des répiscules et celle de l'horreur, nous nous souviendrons de. Commitment to remember. They were young as we are young. They served, giving freely of themselves. To them we pledge amid the winds of time to carry their torch and never forget. We will remember them. Promised is a souvenir. Ils étaient jeunes, jeunes comme nous. Ils ont servi dans un généreusement de même. Nous leur promettons, en dépit du temps qui passe, de porter le flambeau et de ne jamais pas oublier. Nous nous souviendrons de. I would now request two minutes of silence in remembrance.
now call on Padre Kelly Jackson for the benediction. O oh God of these people and this nation, may we pause at the close of this remembrance ceremony to acknowledge again your sovereignty over our lives and our country. We remember before you our comrades now departed this life. We honor them for their loyalty to God and country, for their good deeds and their bravery. May they rest in peace and may the good work you have begun in them be brought to perfection, that our nation may be strong and our people secure and happy. Let us all depart from this place in peace and love and with charity with our neighbors. May we be joined together in the common goal of service to God and our country, give a safe journey to our homes, and blessings be with all of you. Amen. I am honored to be here with you as we celebrate our fallen heroes. Although we cannot thank them personally, we continue to recognize and pay tribute to them and ensure that their stories are told. I'd like to extend a special thanks to the Children's Choir from Rose Avenue Public School for their beautiful rendition of O Canada. I'd also like to thank our special guests for their participation in this, our second annual ceremony. The flags will remain up until November 12th. Thank you all for being here.